Hi, welcome to the Ecamm channel. This is Xue Hang. In this tutorial, we will show how to calculate the capacitance of supercapacitor in a three electrode cell or the capacitance of a single electrode. In an Ecamm lab, you always hear like three electrode cell, two electrode cell. So what exactly the difference is between a three electrode cell and a two electrode cell? So let's first look at a three electrode cell. A three electrode cell is composed of working electrode, counter electrode, and a reference electrode. We measure the current between the working and the counter electrode, and also measure the potential difference between the working electrode and the reference electrode. In the same cell, the current is the same for the working and the counter, as the potential of the reference electrode is always constant. So the potential V here is always the potential of the working electrode versus the reference electrode. So when we are operating a three electrode cell, we can monitor the potential and the current of only the working electrode or this single electrode. So for a two electrode cell, we don't have a reference electrode. And in the two electrode cell, we cannot monitor the potential and the current change of a single electrode because the potential of both the working electrode and the counter electrode is changing during cycling. If the counter electrode is overcapacitive, meaning that the capacitance of the counter is much, much larger than the working, then the potential of the counter electrode can hardly change during the cycling. Then the counter electrode also functions as a reference electrode in this case. And we can monitor the single electrode again in our two electrode fabrication. Okay, so now we have the device and we usually use the cyclic voltammetry, CV, and the galvanostatic charge and discharge, GCD, to evaluate the capacitance of the electrode of a supercapacitor. In our tutorial 1 and 2, we already discussed differences between the electrical double layer capacitor, EDLC, and the pseudocapacitor. They are both supercapacitor, but their CV curve and GCD curve are very different from each other. When we calculate the capacitance, Q equal to CV is always correct. The capacitance should always equal to the charge over V. It means the capacitance should equal to the overall charge of a single electrode over the potential window of the single electrode. If we are calculating the capacitance from CV, then we can derive the equation into this new formula, C equal to 1 over E small v integral V1 to V2 I dV. Here, E equal to V2 minus V1. For EDLC, because I is constant with V, so the capacitance is just I over the scan rate. If I changes with V, then we have to do the integral, integral I dV. And when we are calculating the capacitance from GCD curve, it is a common mistake to calculate the capacitance based on C equal to I T over V for any shape of the GCD curve. The equation C equal to ID over V actually only can be applied to the supercapacitor when the GCD curve is perfectly linear. In the most cases, the potential does not have linear relationship with the time. So the spontaneous capacitance actually changes when the slope of the GCD curve changes. So we should actually integral dt over V in order to calculate the capacitance. So no matter for GCD or CV, it is always correct to calculate capacitance from C equal to Q over V. And we can further write Q equal to integral I dt over V. Some software will offer you the methods to integral the current change as a function of T, and then you can easily calculate the capacitance from this equation as well. Before we calculate the capacitance, it is very important to make sure that we are really dealing with a supercapacitor. We cannot calculate the capacitance for all type of electrochemical energy store devices, especially for the device with battery-like behavior, such as here. Here is the GCD curve for a typical battery material, lithium ion phosphate. The slope of the GCD curve reflects the spontaneous capacitance. 
So we can clearly divide the GCD curve into three regions. The first region, the capacitance is zero for us per gram. From 3.4 volts to 3 volts, the capacitance can be calculated to be 1,866 farads per gram. And from 3 volts to 2 volts, the capacitance is again 0 farads per gram. So it means that if we report 1,866 farads per gram for this material, then the capacitance is almost an order of magnitude higher than that of all carbon-based capacitive electrode. However, this capacitance is actually only available in a 0.2 volt range. And we know for a supercapacitor, we calculate the energy based on E equal to 1 over 2 CV square. The energy density equal to 0.5 multiply the capacitance and the square of the voltage. If the capacitance 1866 frads per gram is used to calculate the energy based on this equation, then the energy density can be as high as 1019 watt hour per kilogram. But actually, only 0.2 volt have the same capacitance of 1866 frads per gram. So the actual energy density should be 10.33 watt hour per kilogram. So it's about 100 times lower than the value estimated if we calculate everything based on the equation of a supercapacitor instead of battery. So next time we will talk more about how to calculate energy density of an electrochemical energy storage device. Thank you for watching the video today and see you next time.